Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. As he is here. What's up, baby? Uh, sorry that we uh couldn't get in last week to knock out an episode, man. A lot was going on, um, but you know I feel good. You know, came in here today. Uh, Alex took his microphone, bumped it across my lips twice. Twice, that was crazy. My man. microphone, yeah. chill out, Charlotte. I mean, you do own the microphone. This is your microphone. Right. It's not Charlotte's microphone. I mean, you ain't move out the way when I did it. Though. Well, the first time was an accident. The second time you was flirting. Clearly, nah. yeah, that was a little bit. weird. You know what I'm saying? Nah, he was wild. Wow. It was really weird. Wow, I didn't your reaction it. was also weird, and I'm not trying to judge, but like the first one hit, it went like that, and then you went like this, and the second one went hit, and then and then <laughs> it didn't move more, but you went like See, exactly. Yeah, I it was, was like, weird. Whoa. Like for the third one, it was almost like okay, you're ready. You know, <laughs> it's like you've been waking out of your sleep like that before. Yeah, does, has that happened to you? Nah, not because they say that a lot about uh, people who've had uh, UFO encounters and alien encounters. No, it's anal probing, never with the mouth. I mean, I, you never I, hear about oral probing. It's all anal. It is, but they say that that comes from actually like suppressed uh, molestation. Really? My therapist never told me that one. But you never got anal probed by aliens. Yeah, you you never said that that happened to you in your life. I don't think so. The only time I've ever felt anally probed is after I got the colonoscopy. Because once the, the the shit wears off, the anesthesia, yeah. you definitely feel like okay, there was something, something was there. there. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. As you should. Something's up there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's just justified. like just like something has been up there above us for the past couple of weeks and nobody gives a fuck. I have not spoken to you about this. I want to know what Andrew Schultz's theory is about these unidentified flying objects that the uh, America keeps shooting out the sky. Um first one was a Chinese balloon. We know it, it had a big ass made in China sticker on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They acknowledged it was made in China. Yeah. The next three they say were unidentified flying objects. They can't connect it to China. They don't know they don't know where it came from. Haven't recovered no wreckage. Don't think they will. Mm. What do you think they were? Uh they're all China. You think 100%. they're all China? Yeah. Okay. We don't want to look like, you know, we're soft and just have Chinese shit flying up in the sky this yeah. whole time. So we're saying that we don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. UFO just means China. <laughs> you know what I found interesting? For real, I, I really do believe that. Anytime it's UFO, it's China spying on us, and we don't want to admit that we're just letting ourselves get spied on. If I throw a box of chicken fried rice, is it an unidentified fried object? It's, it, it is. <laughs> It is, it is right? a unidentified fried fried object. O- frying <laughs> object. <laughs> <laughs> it's not flying. If it's I frying. take some chicken fried rice and put it in something 100%. that's not the Chinese yep. container yep. and toss it, yep. it's an unidentified that's fried an object. That's an unidentified frying object. That's right. That's 100%. Right. That's until right. we identify it. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. That's right. that's We've right. identified these frying objects as Chinese. Yeah. No, we're not the last three. Which I found interesting because we, China, did, we didn't get any of the information. We didn't. It's like we're yeah. trying to send a message to China like, oops, we don't have it, but we do have yeah. it. We know what you're up to, but we're not going to give you the credit for being so brazen and spying on us like that. But you don't think China would take the credit because China said. So you don't think it's weird that there's one person didn't show up to the podcast today? Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. that's a little curious, isn't wow. it? He's assigned to us, Charla. Our, our resident, that's our Chinese representative. Our trans Asian did that's not show That's the CIA, up. Chinese intelligence agency. Wow. You thought that the CIA was the central intelligence wow. agency? No. Wow. UFO is unidentified frying object. Wow. Come Damn. on, bro. That is a good point. Where Come is on, Chris? bro. Where is FBI, Chris? what is FBI? Fried. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what is FBI? What is it? I'm, I'm gonna let you stall. Come on, Charlotte. What is Hold FBI? On. Hold on. You know the, oh, you know the, the CIA. The fried bro of investigations. It's- the what? Flat booty investigation. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. If you don't think, if you don't think that every one of our intelligence agencies has been run oh, over, man. infiltrated by, by Chinese, the Chinese, they've been infiltrated. Damn. Yeah. Yes, and just now we're finally getting privy to that shit. 
And Joe Biden's not doing shit. <laughs> Joe Biden's Chinese. <laughs> you don't think Joe Biden's Chinese, bro? Hold on, man. <laughs> hold, on, hold, on, hold, on. hold on. Hold on, bro. Hold on. You don't think Joe Biden's Chinese? <laughs> yo, 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 listen, listen, guys. Listen, guys. What we're trying to say is the Chinese have taken oh, over, okay? Man. They've tried it, and we need to do something about it. That's so funny. What is there to do? It's, we got Chris here on, <laughs> listening on Zoom. It's, it's not just Chris. whole is, section is red. <laughs> it's Chris and all of them. What is that? But what? Chris, is, Chris is not here. We find three unify, unidentified frying objects in one week, and then Chris just doesn't show up to the fucking podcast. They got called in. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you why I'm disappointed that Chris isn't here, because at this point, somebody does have to represent the Asian community. Absolutely. Because if people think that China is fucking with us in this way, mm. if y'all thought the reaction to COVID was something, when they thought that COVID was... A Chinese mm. disease and Chinese, uh, the China people were doing chemical warfare, or biological warfare. What do you think they're going to have to think, think now? Mm. What do you think they're going to think now? <laughs> Yo, it sounded like you were speaking Chinese for a second. <laughs> man, shut up. Man. <laughs> Yo, what? That shit do sound Yo, country as fuck. Man, <laughs> it do, it do, it do. It's not a Chinese, it do. Bro. I mean, it, it's a country they and Chinese. You. What you all think now? <laughs> <laughs> what you all think? Damn, I never noticed how much country in China sound like. Uh, oh, why do you think that is, bro? Why? Because they got you, dude. Man, shut up, they man. Did. They've <laughs> infiltrated the South. <laughs> what y'all gonna think now? <laughs> That's crazy. You speed it up. No, no, you speed it up. If you speed it up, Southern, if you speed up, if you speed up, what y'all gonna think now? No, you're right. What y'all gonna think now? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, for if real, yo. <laughs> if you speed up, honky tonk. I never thought of that, yo. I never thought of that shit, yo. Yeah. What do you want? A sweet tea? That shit makes all the sense in the world. Y'all want sweet tea? <laughs> no, for real. All you do is speed God up. God damn. Yeah. You speed I up. I gotta look into that. Say what? I gotta look into Why that. Say that God, fast. What? I gotta look in that. I gotta look I gotta look into that. <laughs> I gotta look into that. Now speed it up. Speed it up. Yo, this is there's something to this, yo. <laughs> no, there's something to this, yo. All you have to do is speed it up, bro. That's what they do. Yo, man. I never thought of that. That's what they do. Chinese sound like sped up honky tonk. Yes. Why do you think wow. black people love like anime so much and like kung fu movies? They understand it. Or why are Chinese restaurants so big in the South? Because mm. it's Chinese food. Uh, of course, it's delicious. But I'm talking about you. You think about all the times you walked in certain places, mm -hmm. and there's certain people that have uh, accents or you know languages, and you can't understand them. Yeah. You ain't never had that problem with Chinese people. Mm. I, almost I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> what? I almost thought you were speaking Chinese again, bro. <laughs> man, shut up, man. in and out, bro. I'll be honest. You Yo, are I can't unhear it now. This is crazy. No, for real. You, When your southern comes out, you go in and out. I cannot unhear it. <laughs> That's wild. Bro. I don't know what language you're speaking right now, man. I'm having an existential <laughs> crisis. Oh, so you, 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 you convinced that those unidentified flying objects were from China? I am convinced, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going there with you. I'm not doing it. I'm not going we, where, man. We've shot our load for China. Yeah. That's it. And then we're done, dude. <laughs> we're fucking done, man. We are done. We are. Come on. Hey, so stupid, what, 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 what? Let's just be done. Don't you think it's weird, though? Yeah. That yeah. Talk that shit. The government shot down three unidentified flying objects, mm -hmm. told the American people, we don't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. We're not going to recover the wreckage. We don't know what they were. And nobody gives a fuck. Am this, I tripping? This is my favorite part of America. Talk to me. Our ability to not give a fuck about things that don't directly affect us, make us look cool, or improve our lives is impressive. Yeah. Impressive. Like, if you want us to get you to care about, like, anything, you just need to make... You, you just need to shame people for not caring or make them look really cool for caring. Yeah, 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 yeah. You between, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no in-between. There's no, it's like, and it's all self-interest at the end of the day. And sometimes it's good that there is self-interest. Like, for example, black rights for black people. That's good. You yeah, should yeah, want yeah, rights. Yeah, yeah. Actually, non-blacks, we should want rights for you guys too. We should want but that. Yeah, that's, but that's, yeah. that's not necessarily a self-interest. It is. But it's an overall interest because that's what America promises to be. Yes, but the I think a lot of the white people that got on board were doing it because they would feel shamed if they didn't. Oh, absolutely. If you can't, yeah. you can't call yourself an American. 
Sure. That and, also, but I think it like became trendy. It no, became like saying. a thing to wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. almost that Lance Armstrong shit, where yeah. it's just like live strong. It's like you just want people to think you support cancer. You yeah. gave a dollar. It's with that for it's it's, it's it's like that for damn near every marginalized group. Yes. So LGBTQ, you got to make sure supporting your marginalized yeah. group makes makes you look cool. Sorry, makes your what are they called allies look cool? Yeah, 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 yeah. If your allies get points for supporting you, they're gonna go support them because everybody's motivated by self interest. Well, somebody gotta explain to me how come Joe Biden supporting Ukraine so much? Then who's that? Bro, looking, who's I don't that get cool that to? shit at all, bro. I think that they need to do an investigation right. Can I into President something? Biden and his relationship with Ukraine because he treats that yeah, shit like but, a, a, but, a mistress with a side with a baby. Bro. They already did it. No, I'm, but they need to dig deeper. There's something there, bro. It, it it's all already the proven it's there. Ukraine was just paying fucking Hunter Biden money for doing nothing. I remember that. So what's up? All of this money, all of this money that they're dumping in the Ukraine can't be going just towards the war. Somebody bro. explained this. I forgot exactly what it was, but like in a way it saves us money in the long run because we're destabilizing Russia. So instead of spending money to destabilize Russia in other ways, we're spending money directly there to destabilize it. That was the justification. Is Russia being destabilized though? Well, what they're doing is they're spending an exorbitant amount of money in this war because mm-hmm. they can't back out of the war because then it makes them look weak. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like we're back in like an Afghanistan situation where the first country to go broke loses. Same thing as like the space race. First country to go broke loses. So that's that's what the... So what if China starts bankrolling Russia? Well, now, now we got a little situation. But I don't know if China wants Russia to have much power. I think China's like, we want to be the only country in Asia with the power. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know either, man. I just don't like the fact that it looks like Ukraine got a blank check. They really do. And it's like wild to be like, like and you, to, to go visit. Yeah. Did you go visit Ohio after the train derailment? Oh, no, with all nobody the, cares. You know what I mean? Nobody with all the cares. chemicals in the air Amer- out there. Americans don't care about Ukraine. We cared about it for a minute. Ukraine was like the perfect, perfect excuse for white people to take down their Black Lives Matter posters from their window. You know how like <laughs> as a white person, you can't take down your Black Lives Matter poster because yeah. the neighborhood is going to go, oh, now Black Lives don't matter. Yeah. But if you have someone to replace it with, you have a new cause where you still get to look virtuous, yeah. you get to throw that shit in. So now there's all these windows, and I saw it even in my neighborhood that had Black Lives Matter posters, and now they no pray longer do it, and now it's Pray for Ukraine. Man, Ameri- That's a service that black people should offer. Ameri- what? They come to your <clears throat> crib and take down your your Black Lives Matter poster. Because <laughs> you can't do it yourself as a white person, but if black people come and take it down, Yo, that's a great that's idea. That's the shit I know white people do in the dead of night. Oh, <laughs> like, oh That's like Santa Claus. Yo, bro. 100%. <laughs> little kids coming out. Oh my daddy. <laughs> Yo, what, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you one thing too. America is a terrible place to have a world war for another world war to happen. Talk to me. Because it's so much of a melting pot. Mm. So it's so many... Do you, do you have... People from Ukraine here. You have people from Russia here. You have people from China here. You know what I mean? Like, and then you just got Americans, yep. you know, and Americans are going to be, we've seen it. We've seen it a million times. That, why do you think they have these stop Asian hate campaigns and the, bro. When, after 9-11 uh, uh, against all the Muslims? And, like, we know what's going to happen. Bro, well, that's why it was so hard with World War II. Think about it. Like, America is a country that's like a lot, you know, I want to say like, majority but there are plenty of italian and german immigrants yeah 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 yeah. so world war ii england's got to get us into the war on their side yeah to fight our uncles yeah 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 our yeah, grandparents yeah. yeah our cousins yeah right so they have to find a way to convince us to do it because obviously the germans and italians are on the same side absolutely they're all nazis so that's a crazy little situation that takes a lot of government manipulation it will it, for world war three that's I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, people really undersell World War II. Do they? They really do. I mean, we've had a million movies made out of it. I, they, I know, but like, I've never heard anybody like put it in the proper context. Do you know 3% of the world's population got wiped out in World War II? Yo, that's light, bro. 3% of no. the world's population? If, if, we're, if we're going on, I mean, like, I think, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, Genghis Khan. I think he took out himself 10% of the world's population. No, really? So I look up Genghis Khan. Because World War II was 75 to 80 million people, like between... So Genghis Khan himself, him and his people, yeah. took out, I think it's something crazy. But that's, like, but that's, but that's, I, you can put all that on Hitler, though. You can say because of Hitler, 3% of the world's population got wiped. Oh, absolutely. I just feel like people, like, well, undersell well, it. Like, when you... 10%. Genghis Khan wiped out 10%? 10% of the world's population. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you want to look 40 at... 40 million people. 
40 million people he but, took but, out. But World War II was 75 to 80. There was just less people when Genghis Khan was alive. Oh, gotcha. But gotcha, gotcha. like in, in terms of percentages, but the, uh, you look at, um, you look at what was it, the bubonic plague. Yeah, yeah. That shit took out between a third to 50% of Europe. Half of the people. That's crazy. I think how much of the bubonic plague? 200 million people total died? One, one in three people in so Europe. I think they're saying total death is 200 million. God right? damn. That was because the Genghis Khan? No, that was bubonic plague. That was another Chinese one. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> this guy's so it is. Crazy. It came it is. from no, China. Right. Right. It did come he's from right. China. He's right. 75, 75 to 200, to 200 million. million. And think people. about it, they weren't even, they didn't have like a census back then. You know what I mean? They weren't really counting people. So that's like rough estimates. Andrew Schultz's ability. To ha the, I was talking about Hitler, Genghis Khan. He brought it back to China. <laughs> I love China. Whatever, like you, I, like, I love China. Like, my God. I love China. I was, just, I was just trying to point out how there is no redeeming qualities about somebody like Hitler. I'm just you saying, I mean? Asia got some wild shit. Asia got some, that's the world. Hey, <laughs> Asia got some wild, hey, you want me to do it again? You want me to do it again? <laughs> no, no. You want me to do it no, again? We don't. Where's the swastika from? What country? No. India. Where's India in? Wow. Asia. Asians is the how's problem the how's the for everything. How's the swastika from... Um, it actually means like freedom or something like that. What does it mean, Shep? Purity and life. Oh, so that's what they thought they were and doing. And they co-opted it. Yeah. That's what they thought they were doing by eliminating uh, yeah. Jewish people. They thought they were purifying a race. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Wild, right? I didn't know that. And think, so think about that. Like, think about all the swastikas that are already all over India. All the swastikas that are already painted on things, yeah, part of the yeah, history, yeah, part yeah, of the yeah. culture. And now you're like a Western person. You go visit India for the first time. You just want to do yoga, relax, meditate. And then every time you look around, you're like, did the Nazis fucking get yeah, over here? You're reminded all this trauma. Yeah, you're right. You want to stand up for your people? You uh, I mean, yeah, no, it's on a mic, shoot. <laughs> you want to stand up for your people? <laughs> no, he's here. Like, I want to. <laughs> no, I mean, look, uh, I can't take my girlfriend back to India. It's just not possible because she's Jewish. Oh, wow. And if I take her back, she's going to go through whatever PTSD is built in the genes. Absolutely. But Fuck. Absolutely. Uh, the swastika is a symbol for life. It's a symbol for purity. It was co-opted by the Nazis because they believe in this like Aryan ideology that they're the master race. But uh, there's this thing called the Indo-Aryan migration where the people from the Caucasus Mountains, they kind of split up over Europe, Iran and India. So we all have like shared history. That's why Sanskrit is like so similar to Latin. That's why we have words for that are the same across from India and Europe. Like the word for pineapple, I think is the same in like 15 to 20 languages. So there's a lot of shared history that way. So that's where they were trying to co-opt with the swastika is like, they'll take that and that's the symbol of the pure master race. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was just saying. Uh, yeah, but in the racial hierarchy, we'd be fine in Nazi Germany. So question, wow. do y'all do y'all do y'all try to defend the swastika to people? Of course, it's theirs first. Well, I mean, look, it's like cultural appropriation doesn't affect us that much anymore because they took the worst thing, right? So we're fine with it. Like you can have yoga, you can have turmeric, you can have all of that. Yeah. I just wonder why in India didn't try to denazify the country. I guess because the swastika just does not we, mean that well, to them. We've yeah, had it's the not Nazi to them. Yeah, wow. We've had the swastika for like thousands of years. So yeah. the Nazis just came in, it's new. It's like a kid walking around in skinny jeans saying that he invented it, even though jeans have been around for 300 years. So how do y'all explain that? Though? I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. If I'm Indian, how do I explain that to people? Like, if they see me with a swastika, everybody knows what they you know, you think that's going to mean. Like, Bro, my buddy has a bracelet that's got it on it. No. One of the little beads has a swastika on it. I was like, bruh, is that, what, what's up with that? And he was like, oh, yeah, this has uh, been around for thousands of years. Ain't no way. Really that's like, a brave motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Ain't yep. no way. Yup. When, uh, so when my parents came here, is this what you guys feel like when we do cornrows? No, it, not at all. It's not. No, I mean it is making me think because, about because you aren't you're not like damn y'all ruin that. Nah. I never or like when that. we start dabbing. Nah. When we take a dance move and we that's that's, that's it? light that's light cultural appropriation. We talking about stuff that's like life and death and got like trauma. And blood attached to it. You know what I mean? People have died because of the swastika symbol. Yo, I was you know just I mean? trying to be funny. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll just stop doing that on this podcast brought to you by Nat Geo. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brittany Grind is officially back in the WNBA. Hey! 
Y'all still not gonna watch. Yeah, that's fact. Y'all motherfuckers ain't shit. Yeah. Y'all rallied around Britney Griner. BG got freed. And the ratings in the WA did not spike at all. And I will be highly upset if she comes back to the Phoenix. Two things. If she comes back to the Phoenix Mercury and that game isn't on prime time on one of the major sports networks, that's fucked up, right? Because that shows you one thing. They know this shit ain't going to bring ratings. Boom. Because if that shit could bring ratings, that shit would be prime time on, who you think? ABC? I mean, it'd have to be ABC. ABC, you know what I mean? Like, ABC, yeah, they're like, on the rights. Right? That's right. If there's not a big media thing around her first game, they know that it don't bring ratings. That's and all they not. give a fuck about. Nobody they don't care cares. about what's right. Yeah, you know what no, I mean? No. They don't care that she's actually home. Perfect example of like a great uh, thing to virtue signal on. A great issue to virtue mm -hmm. signal on. Perfect example about it. Because the truth of the matter is, if you really cared about BG being free, you would be supporting her line of work because that's what ha that's what led her to have to go to Russia in the first place. Mm. The fact that they have to pick up extra money mm. during the off season of the WNBA. Hell yeah. So if you really don't want them to have to go out to these places and make extra money and put themselves at risk, then you would make sure that the WNBA is a profitable business just by supporting it. Yeah, they're not going to. But you're not going to do that. What, well, can we talk about real basketball? Okay. <laughs> um, can, how did you guys feel? How did you guys feel about, uh, just whites dominating the dunk contest. Unidentified flying object. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Unidentified flying object. <laughs> and you know what I hate? I hate when everybody runs a joke into the ground. What? I mean, how many times were y'all going to say, I guess white men can't jump? Oh, is that what they were saying? I heard that by a million different people. I'm like, come on, guys. I thought he was Asian. China Mac McClung is crazy. Yo, China Mac McClung? China Mac McClung is crazy, yo. That's China Mac... <laughs> China Mac McClung is crazy. Yo. <laughs> um, yo. I, I was impressed. You know what I mean? I actually think that this was all staged, though. What do you mean it was all staged? Because if you know Mac McClung, you know what I mean? He's had these highlights on YouTube for a long time. And uh, last year, Stephen A. Smith proposed oh. that uh, they go get the street ballers and put them in the slam dunk contest because they be having super creative dunks. Right. So Mac has gone viral for his super creative dunks. The fact that Philadelphia 76ers signed him the well, week of the slam dunk contest. He was already drafted and he was in the G League. He was in the G League. Yeah. But the fact that he got signed for a two-way contract this week. That does seem suspicious. Come on, man. Now, here's the thing that I would say about that is that the 76ers are contenders to win it all this year, right? They're, they're in the running. Yeah. So would you risk a roster spot to make that happen? Yes. Because this is box office, baby. I mean, you're right. We're talking about it right now. This it's is nice box office because I want to yeah. see if he can play now. Yo, white people really are bringing Duncan back. He's the white savior. That's his, that, yeah. that should be his nickname, white the savior. The white savior. But yeah, all yeah. you people that get so mad and be like, I hate these movies that have these white saviors. This is the white savior. Yo. That is the white savior. He saved the dunk contest. That, that I, is. I don't know why they just didn't come out and say it. They kept saying, Mac McClung saved the dunk contest. He's a white savior. Bro, what is That's happening? That's his nickname, Mac, Mac the, the white, white savior, savior McClung. McClung. That's right. Yeah. He's the white savior. And then, and then I think Jason Tatum won the MVP by shooting a bunch of threes. So you have... You have a white guy who wins the dunk contest, and then you have a black dude wins the MVP by just shooting step back three pointers. Times have changed. We are bro. living in the was it the upside down? Yeah, times have changed. Bro. Times have changed. Man. I saw a dunk that Mac did online that wasn't even in the dunk contest. That shit looked it crazy. Yo. The uh, but he wasn't looking when he dunked it. My God, yeah, like yeah, he's right. like this the whole time, and he like does it around his back, and then like yeah, I'm like what. The fuck, yeah, man? Yeah, we're the best, man. Jesus. <laughs> no, we're the best. White people are the best. I know Kenya can can you want to do recasting right now. Immediately. Can't just, Immediately. Like right now. Yeah, does Kenya's it fuck like, up where the was this guy? Does this fuck up the narrative for white men can't jump? Nah. I mean, Kenya can insert him CGI if he wants to. That'd be fucked. Yeah. Um, Rihanna, what? Oh, shit. We weren't here last week, so we didn't talk about the Super Bowl. That's crazy. Yeah. What'd you think? I didn't care. I played a video game the whole time. You didn't watch it. <laughs> no. You didn't watch it all. Nope. You nope. a cat, bro? Nope. 
Nope, 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 nope. Why you didn't want to watch I the was game? Watching, I was playing Last of Us. I got Last of Us, the video game. Oh. That shit was fucking incredible. I wonder, have you been watching that show yet? My wife watches it all oh, the time. Oh, it's so good. I wonder how many people have got gone back to the video game because of the TV show. I'm one. Wow. And the video game is fucking exceptional. Really? I haven't played video games in 15 years. It's on PlayStation one of them? PlayStation, shows? yeah. Wow. And I, and I got locked in nonstop playing. You bought a PlayStation just for that game. Month. Now, my wife... This was the dumbest move on her part. She wanted to play the Hogwarts, the new, uh, the new Harry Potter game. Yeah, she's a huge Harry Potter fan. She's like, so, so can we get a PlayStation? And I was like, fine. And then I downloaded that Last of Us, and then I was playing that shit so much she almost threw it out the fucking window. I was up until four in the morning every night, <laughs> waking her up by smashing the square button. Yeah, like I was locked into this. What is game. it about? Uh, zombies, right? Yeah, but it's kind of cool. The zombie, the zombie scenario. Basically, all right, so right now there are these things called cordyceps. I'm probably mispronouncing them. And uh, this exists in real life now. And mm -hmm. what they do is they're a fungus that infects insects. And they take over the insect's body and make the insect do whatever the fuck they want with it. So the insect just stops living and it just becomes a shell for these cordyceps. Yeah. And people are like, well, why can't they live in human beings? And it's like, because the temperature inside an insect is much lower than a human being. Mm -hmm. The temperature inside a human being is 97.8 or whatever it is, yeah. 98.7. So they just can't live on us, right? But... And this is the concept for the show, the plot of the show. With global warming, Ooh. maybe these fungi now are able to survive in hotter temperatures because oh. the earth is warming. And what's a hotter temperature than an insect? A human body. So they start infecting humans and taking over the human body. So the time I was watching it with my wife and I saw these two dudes tongue kissing the fuck out of that each other. That is one of the most beautiful episodes you'll ever see in television history. So, but that wasn't... Two humans. Third episode. It was one infected by insects? No, none. No, so those are still humans. But they're just still humans. <laughs> All right. So they that, that was actually two gay people. Yeah, that was. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I just thought yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I never knew the plot no, of the no, show. No, no. It's just a gay relationship that's like a, a non sequitur part of it, but it's really the best episode in television history. Really? One of the best. Like, I, I, literally, I'm, I'm messaging uh, some of my buddies, like, represent the people who made the show and i'm messaging them at the beginning of the episodes the third episode it's basically about this relationship with these two guys that are living in the apocalypse right okay. and um and I, the first message i see i see that they're like a gay couple and i'm like here hollywood goes with this fucking bullshit trying to inject the woke narrative and everything right like 15 late 15 minutes later i'm messaging like hold on this shit kind of good and then 30 minutes after that, I'm, I go, I'm crying. <laughs> I was crying by the end of it. And it was this beautiful, relatable love story that had, it, it, yeah, they were gay, but that wasn't the thing that they were trying to project. It was two people in love trying to survive. Were they gay aboard, bro? You said it's the post-apocalyptic. <laughs> so if, what if all the women are infected with insects? You know no, what no, I mean? No, no. Infected with the virus. Infected with. Oh, the, infected, uh, infected with the virus. Yeah, not insects. <laughs> it, it, it exists. Infected with insect. the virus. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. What if there's no women around? What if y'all just bored? Like, no, that could happen too. Yeah. And I'm sure that does happen. Yeah. But uh, but no, these guys were gay. Wow. Because it was one dude who was totally fine living by himself. He was like one of these doomsday preppers. Yeah, until they, that, until that, until that ass came in there. And then, right? That's right, right. And there's a scene where they're like on top of each other, and their oh, chest that. hairs like just rubbing into one another. It's wild. Really? Yeah, yeah. the ass of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last of bus, as in bussy. <laughs> Oh, that didn't go in? No. Oh, okay. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting, man. Yeah, you gotta shoot. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta shoot. shoot. You gotta shoot. Anyway, Riri, what'd you think of it? Uh, I thought it was Rihanna's best performance. Oh, come on. I thought it was one of her. <laughs> this guy's a fucking... <laughs> well, well, let, me, well, let me give it some context. Um, I was nervous for Rihanna going into this. Because you knew? I mean, Rihanna's never been like a phenomenal live performer. We know this. Like, like this, <sighs> isn't, this isn't news to anybody like you know what i mean she's 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 just rihanna like she's the coolest person in the room like you're just happy to be looking at rihanna you mm. know what i mean but she, we, we, we we've never like she she performs like a rapper to me mm. you know what i mean that's why i said to me this was her best performance because they produced it very well like they 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 knew what her strengths are and they knew what her weaknesses were in pregnancy or not i think that they just put together a great production. Like, all the dancers, the set looked great. She looked great. You know what I mean? They kept the vocals. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming she was lip-syncing. I don't know. You know what I mean? But it was a, it was a, it was, to me, this was her, one of her best live shows. Mm. To me. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, that's a hot take, my boy. That's a hot take. One of her best shows. Rihanna. I'm not comparing it to nobody. Have you seen her live show before? Yes. Oh, you've gone in person. No, no, I've never. Have I gone to a Rihanna show in person? I don't think so. What, no, they did like remember. an HBO special or something like that? No, I did. No, no, I did see Rihanna in person. I saw Rihanna in person one time. I don't remember when. I feel like it was in Philly years ago, though. I don't remember. Never like a VMA or something like that? Bro, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all, man, no, I mean, like, y'all need to Google, y'all need to Google Rihanna at the 2016 VMAs. Why? That's all I'm gonna tell y'all. <laughs> Google her at the 2016 VMAs and watch that performance. I remember her getting killed for that performance. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I remember her, I remember people being overly critical of Rihanna and her live performance because it got to a point where you didn't have nothing else to talk, talk, talk about her about. Mm. You know what I mean? It was like, she's, Flawless in every other way. Everybody loves Rihanna. So the only thing people would critique her about was her shows. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know. So you basically went into this going, I'm not expecting Beyonce. I'm not expecting Michael Jackson. And then you had low expectations. And then you saw that the way that they crafted the performance, you're like, I, oh, I, this was really cool what they did. I didn't have, I didn't have low expectations. I just, oh, that, that was a dope show too, though. I remember this one. But uh, um, the, 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 the 2016 VMAs was a dope performance. But yeah, I didn't have, I mean, it was, I didn't have no expectations, yo. I just didn't. Hmm. What do you say about the reaction to it? Uh, I think people were being overly critical just because it, that's the era that we live in. You know uh... what I'm saying? I, I, I think people were being overly critical just because that's the era that we live in. Uh, people love, they, they look at Rihanna. She's a billionaire now. Like, yo, do you understand we live to tear successful people down? Yeah, we do. Like, nobody was going to walk away from this performance. Rihanna could have sang like Adele and danced like Beyonce, and nobody was going to walk away from this performance and be like, man, she killed that. That's not what we do. Yeah. That's why when people like Rihanna decide to stay away from music forever and just make their money off of, you know, selling makeup, I'm not mad at her. I thought she always lip synced. <laughs> well, that's why some people lip sync. Yeah. You know what I mean? But she, listen... To me, she performed like that. That performance right there at the Super Bowl halftime show it reminded me of a uh, of a Jay Z performance because there was a time when people and Jay Z will probably admit this himself. Like he was not a great performer compared to the Busta Rhymes of the world right. and yeah. the DMXs. You know what I mean? But he found a way to take his cool, curate it, and then translate and, and translate it on stage in, yeah. in in a way that was dope. And to me, that's what she did. To me, yeah. yeah. That is an interesting point about Jay-Z. Instead of trying to, like, compete with the DMXs or the Busta Rhymes in terms of, like, energy or charisma on stage, he found a way to do it by being subtle. I remember seeing him live and feeling that way. Yeah. That's what Rihanna did to me. Yeah. Rihanna was the coolest person in the room, just doing enough. She ain't got to... Just doing enough. Let the dancers do all the real work. Yeah. Hit a little butterfly here and there, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was, it was cool to me. Yeah. Are you... Okay, here's... Do you think her being pregnant actually was to her advantage uh, in that people can go, yeah, she wasn't being so dynamic up there because she's pregnant. No, not if you've been, if you've been watching Rihanna all of these years. I'm saying for the people who haven't. What well, airlines did they sell? I mean, yeah, they can use that as their lines that they sell. Like, ah, okay. like that's like, she would have, she would have did that same performance if she wasn't pregnant. That's what I'm saying. So it was to her advantage that she was. I didn't even, I mean, the pregnancy, uh, hey, I, I guess, yeah. I can see why people say that, but to me, with or without the pregnancy, that was a one of Rihanna's best live performances that I've seen. Mm. Personally, that was one of my personal favorites. I, I I loved it though. I mean, I loved every, I love I love watching everybody jump out the window. Why do we tear people down? Why do we build people jealousy up and tear them down and enviousness and don't want to admit it? And then how do we? How do people avoid that from happening? How do you, you stop can't. that? You just can't. You have to accept it as part of the game. You can't. There's nobody that everybody loves universally. Yeah. And even when they, even, the more people love you, the more people are going to hate you. Because we live in this world where everybody wants to be a contrarian. Think about it. Everybody got a podcast. Mm. Everybody got a YouTube page. Yeah. Everybody got a blog. So what do you have to have when you have those things? A fucking opinion. Yeah. So if everybody got the opinion of, ah, Rihanna did her thing. Let me just take the opposite stance uh, just because. There's some attention there. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the world we live in. Like, we live in the age of opinions for sure. Never have there been this much access to different opinions in the history of the world. And, and not just opinions, opinions that people can 
be rewarded for it. I'm putting rewarded in air quotes because rewarded yeah. to them is getting reposted on Shade Room. Now, you know could, what I mean? Could someone say that <coughs> you're doing this as well by having the opposite opinion of everybody else on the Rihanna performance? No, because I feel like my opinion is rooted in uh, what I've seen and what I've seen throughout right. the years. And you're saying theirs is rooted in attention. It's not really what they feel, no. but what they know that they can say to get attention. Because if I was seeking attention, I would have said from the beginning, I'm nervous about Rihanna's performance. <laughs> you God, know what I mean? you when God. they announced it, I'd have been like, oh, man, I don't know, yo. Yeah, yeah, and I'd have been pointing out all of the different times we've seen Rihanna not be the best on stage. You know what mm. I mean? But I don't, I, don't, you know, I don't want her to not succeed. Did you find that happen with you? Like on your way up, everybody really excited for you. And then once you guys get to the top, did you feel like there was more hate? Uh, no, I think it's always been 50, 50, but I oh, think really? that, I think that what we tend to do is pay attention only to what we want to hear. You know what I mean? What satisfies our what satisfies perception. Of self. Absolutely. And that's, but that's why dangerous because you have negative very. perception of self, then you're going to listen to all the negative stuff. If you have positive perception of self, maybe you'll only listen to the positive. You have to have like a very balanced no, perspective. You don't listen to any of it. And if you do listen yeah. to it, I always remember what my dad said. You're yeah. never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad as they say you are. My guy, yeah. Cadillac Jack, salute to Cadillac Jack, another great mentor of mine in this radio game. Rule of 10. Three people going to like it. Three people not going to like it. Four people don't even give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Four people just sitting around waiting to see what everybody else thinks. There's that great quote. Uh, uh, you would care. You wouldn't care so much what people think of you if you realize how little they did. We be in our own heads, in our own bubbles. That's why social media is so dangerous, yo. Social media will have you thinking you got an audience. Because it's 10 people that tweet you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or it's five people that leave a comment on one of your videos or something. Like, like yeah. you, you really think all of a sudden you got this huge audience and everybody gives a fuck about what you got to say. That shit... I've seen that shit drive a lot of people mad. Really? That's what we need to start talking about. How that, I haven't come up with the term for it or, or, or what it is, but it's a disease Which is? that is driving people mad. That shit you're talking about with the insects taking over people's bodies? That's what attention is. That's what this new era is of all of this shit. Yeah. Whether, yeah. whether it's the YouTube podcast or being a, 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 a social media influencer, influencer like yeah. that shit gets to you. Your opinions start being derived from what people are saying online. Yeah. Yo, nothing pisses me off more because I'm the type of person, I'm aware of everything, even though I might, I might acknowledge nothing, mm -hmm. right? So I pay attention. There's nothing worse than talking to a person and they're repeating a bunch of things they saw on social media. And you know you, you know they got it from social media. Yeah. And all you got to do is ask them, well, why you think like that? Yeah, yeah. They have no reason. Yeah. yeah, They have no reason behind why they think like that because all you did was see somebody say it on social media. Now you're running with it. Yeah, but why do yeah. you feel that way? They yeah. don't even know. They just ran with it because it sounds good. That yeah. shit is annoying. They got the playbook on that on that idea they got the playbook on that theory and it's, they just ran with all the talking points you see that in politics a lot i guess we expect it in politics but we don't expect it in just like random culture and to see people just yeah hop on it wow yeah it's tricky yeah so yeah, you so hate what it. is that? I, i'm taking i'm taking i'm taking all that to say you hated rihanna's performance is what you're saying no i didn't watch it and then when i saw it i was like okay it's fine i i, I wasn't like blown away by it but uh, I, I, I think that there was a lot more hate than was necessary. I wonder what they were expecting. Mm -hmm. I guess I had maybe a similar expectation from you. Like, I, I thought the cool thing about Rihanna was her vibe. And I thought that that's her it. energy, and that's what people are so drawn to, not necessarily her, like, dancing prowess. So, pardon? They dismissed... Oh, okay, guy, guy. Let so, me tell you something about Rihanna. Yeah. Some people just are stars, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> some people are just natural born superstars. Some people just got it. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 Rihanna is the type. Somebody was telling this story the other day. I forgot who it was, but they were saying how they were in the lobby a Def Jam years ago when Rihanna had. I think I don't even know if Ponda Replay was out yet, but they was like when she walked through the lobby, everybody was turning like, "Yo, who is that? Who is that? Who is that?" Some people just got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why I hate when people say things like, "Oh, you're not ugly." You know, you just broke. No. You ugly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you I'm saying? You could be both. Because Rihanna, <laughs> this, this person right here was this person always. Right. 
I'm, she's always been this version of herself. Right. You know what I mean? It's just that she's constantly grown, constantly evolved. She's the coolest person in the room. She got an energy. She got a vibe. You can't fake that shit, man. Mm. That's why even with the, the, the debate that about this Vogue cover is so stupid to me. What's the debate? All right. People are saying this is a, an agenda to emasculate the black man. You know what I mean? Mm. As if you've never been a man holding your child walking behind your Yo, black other. dudes can't win, bro. <laughs> you, you, you in your kid's life, you holding your baby, it's like you emasculate. Like, how would you want this cover? Rocky's not there? First of all, Rocky's nowhere to be found? First, this has nothing to do with agenda. This is about star power. Mm -hmm. It's Rihanna, bro. Yeah, Rihanna did the Super Bowl, not Rocky. <laughs> and Rihanna's a superstar. Yeah. Like, not, so, two things. Rihanna's a superstar, so she's gonna be on the front cover in that position regardless. And, hey, man, I want my child and my, 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 you know, soon-to-be husband on the front cover of Vogue with me. Yeah. Boom. Right. That's what superstars do. Also, if you're a husband, why would you be upset at holding your kid? This is just... It's unprovoked. Yo, it's hard. Yo, you know, I never realized this until right now. It's kind of hard to be black, man. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've been doing this, Bob, for about yeah. a decade, and we've it's spoken the, about a lot of topics. Cover that it's the Vogue cover that the Vogue cover that let me know that it's kind of hard to be a black yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. dude. Now, it is interesting with ASAP, though. ASAP, you know, ASAP got a lot of flack when he first started because everybody was like, oh, you know, he's from New York, but he sounds like he's from down south. Then they gave him flack because he was, uh, they, they say he would wear dresses, right? And then, you, you know, you see things with ASAP, like uh, he, went to, he went to jail in Sweden, right? Think about this, right? There's nothing ASAP can do to win people over, right? Because <laughs> all of this shit that allegedly makes you real, <laughs> he's done! Yeah. He went to jail. Right now, he's facing charges of shooting somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's like, I thought that was the shit that y'all liked. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. that was the shit that y'all said made against him. Yeah. You know what so I mean? So what, what do you think they just don't like about him? That he's winning. Uh, he's with Rihanna. Yeah. Like, yeah. bruh, he's with Rihanna. Yeah. He won. There's nothing y'all can say to ASAP Rocky. That man is, and forget the fact that he's with Rihanna. This man is with a beautiful woman that he's raising a family with, yeah. you can look at him and tell he's happy. Yeah. Is that not the essence of life, bro? Yeah. Is that not what success should be about? Yeah. Is that not it? I could care less if they was worth $500. They are happy. That's a, all I see is a happy couple on the front of Vogue magazine. Yeah. If you see something else, something's wrong with you, bro. Yeah. Like you ain't never held your child and walked behind the woman you love. Nope. Because you ain't got kids yet. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And people act like it's a problem with a woman being in front. What if she knows where she's going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I can't. Like, like, what if I don't know where I'm going? And I'm following my woman. Yeah. Or what if she forgot where she parked her car? And then you guys are just looking for it. That's I'm following behind common. my woman. Yeah. I think there's a lot of times where a woman will walk in front. I don't mind my woman walking in front. I never even think about stuff. Like, stuff like that don't even... Cross yeah. my mind, like I, I don't like it when we're walking and then she makes like a turn somewhere without letting me know. Well, get off your phone and pay attention. No, I'm paying attention. Okay, but like we're just walking. She mid sentence, she'll just make the left. And you gotta and we'll say turn where you going. Street. I'd be like, yo, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I know is, man, if I think sometimes my wife thinks I'm I'm the dog a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like You're not the dog, just the man. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but like that is weird. Like you gotta like nudge me and be yeah. like, we're turning left yeah, here. Yeah, that is. Uh, like, I'm halfway through the crosswalk, and then sometimes just because I'm so frustrated. You're giving a dog too much credit. You got to give a dog a little, a little pull when you want Pull me! Yeah. <laughs> pull me! <laughs> sometimes just out of being pure stubbornness, I'll walk the other way. And I'll be like, well, I'll meet you at home. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going <laughs> to follow you around fucking Soho. The fuck I look like a golden doodle to you? I need a nudge, or I need some sort of acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife yeah. will just be walking. Mid sentence, yeah. So I think maybe we should look into maybe going on safari and then just turn that way. Yeah. Now I get it. That's an asshole thing to do, right? <laughs> Is that not? Not if y'all walking to together. Just expect that I'm just like looking at her fucking head the entire time we're walking, I, just the, in case she moves. I, the reason I don't think so is because if y'all walking together, clearly y'all have a destination in mind, right? Yeah, but there's different ways to get to the destination. So if she makes the right, just make the right with her. I, if I don't know she's making the right, now I walk three steps and, duh, 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 and I got to go back. Pay attention. How about an acknowledgement? You want her to hold your hand like Rihanna was holding ASAP's hand? Yeah. Okay, I'm with that. Nothing wrong with that. Or just follow me where the fuck we're going. <laughs> 
What if you don't know where you're going? Then we're going to get there late. <laughs> I just think, the fuck we need nah, to be early to everything. To put bro. the little leashes on you that they put the little. On the I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I just, I just think that if a magazine cover threatens your manhood in any way, shape, or form, you're not much of a man, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wait. Man, why was, was ASAP upset? It no, no. Just people was upset saying it was a. Can you grab me a water? Emasculating the man. Nah, but that's just this. Like, yeah, I think I think men I think are a little bit sensitive right now to emascula emasculation why um i think that sometimes like it, put it this way you like know nothing, how like nothing can make me feel I'm, like less of a man i'm gonna explain it to you you know how like white there are certain white people that see equality as a, a threat a threat yeah, and I a loss you. yeah 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 like, right like like, like you're them, taking what's yeah, mine them being equal with yours. somebody else is taking something from them exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think that there are certain men that also view equality like that yeah you know Ooh, that's a good point because I, I i had a thought uh i feel like patriarchy and white privilege are the same thing no nah, here we go no i'll tell you why because i feel like it puts mediocre people in positions of power and it puts them in positions that they may not be qualified to be in like, just because you're a man doesn't mean you're a fucking leader, bro. Some, yeah, of, these dudes, some of these dudes ain't going to do shit but lead you off a fucking cliff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's plenty of women that I trust in leadership roles way before I do dudes. Like, just because you got a dick or uh, you're a man does not mean that you qualified to be a leader. Mm. And, and, and if you got to create a system, if you have to create a system to keep you in that position of power, you a sucker to me. Let's get rid of the system and let's compete for real, for real. I'm with you. I like that. Yeah. I like decentralized yeah. systems because I want to compete one-on-one. -on -one. But what man has done from the beginning of time, no matter what the race is, uh, their race is, is the second they establish a business, they've tried to create a moat, a metaphorical moat around that business to protect them and them only. Yeah, They're yeah, the yeah. only ones yeah. that could sell this. Yeah. Hey, if you want to sell alcohol, you need a liquor license. Yeah. Well, why do we need a liquor license? Well, yeah. we can't just have everybody out here selling yeah, alcohol. Yeah, so they're yeah. just trying to protect their business. I think that is what mankind does no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. They create a system. They create a system to protect their business. And I agree with you. If your business is that good, why don't we just compete in the free market? That's the idea of capitalism. So it's not very capitalistic if you look at it, but naturally mankind we are in a competition for resources and we will protect those resources with whatever we can, whether if it's military, whether right. it's legislation, you know, governments will find a way to do it. So I think that is like how we naturally just gravitate towards things, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe that's better than the alternative, which is just murdering one another. You want to get to bucking. <laughs> you know Let's I mean? see what like, you got. You want to get to bucking, right? You know? But you could argue that's what podcasting is, Charlotte. Like, like this is actually, no, that's a good argument. Like, there's That's exactly what it is. But there's radio, right? Yeah. There's a few different radio stations. Well, there's yeah. a bunch of radio stations, but there's a few different, like, syndicated national ones. And then we start podcasting. Now, you could go, you know what, fuck this. Why are we letting all these other people compete? Why are we letting all these other people get involved in this game? This game is our game and our game alone. But instead, you said, no, I'll do a podcast too. Yeah, but you know why? No, I, well, I did the podcast because of our guy, Chris Moreau. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to your point. Meaning you weren't angry at it. You weren't insulting them. No, and I'm not angry at it now. And the reason I'm not angry at it is because of what we're talking about. The cream will rise to the to the, to the top. top. Yeah, you believe and, in and, your ability. And everything else will X itself out. Yeah. Last week, New York Times. Podcast companies once walking on air feel the strain of gravity. The dumb money yep. era is over. <laughs> As yep. layoffs, budget cuts, and scuttled deals challenge a long, booming industry. The yep. dust is settling now, baby. Yeah. The dust is settling now. But this is the fun time. Only the strong survive, baby. This is the fun now time. Now we really get to see what you got. Yeah. I saw the Reed celebrating 10 years. Ooh. 10 years this weekend. Woo. How many motherfuckers can say that? That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 10 years of excellence, dominance. Mm -hmm. 10 years of high listenership. 10 years of selling merch out crazy. 10 years of live sold out shows. They put in that motherfucking work. Yep. Built that shit brick by brick. They have a foundation. They have something that cannot be penetrated. And they were in on it early. Yep. 
They were in on this gold rush early. Bro, and it is celebrating 10 years this year, even though we're a new podcast. We're a brand new podcast. It's about to launch. Brand new okay? podcast. About but we're launch. celebrating 10 years. You sure? I think it's next year. No, I think this year. No, this year's 10. Really? This year's 10. Yeah, I looked it up because uh, uh, the uh, Starship the Star Enterprise. Shame Enterprise was Star 2013. Shame. Our first episode with Jazz Fly. I forgot exactly when, but it was 2013. Yeah. My point is the strong have not only survived, they've thrived. Mm. And everybody that's just jumping in now, mm. y'all, y'all jumped in a little too late, buddy. Mm. Y'all jumped in a little too late. And you have to be like exceptional. Like exceptional. Who's it? What's the last podcast you heard that's exceptional? Like unbelievable. Like, oh, I gotta listen to this. I gotta check this out every week. Like the most recent one that came out? Yes. I can't, I can't think of it. Me neither. <laughs> I like this. I like competition. I like when shit dries up. That's you, my point. But also when shit dries up, you find out who really wants to do it. Like, I think there's a lot of people in the game, everyone and their mother hopped in the podcast game because they're They think like, it's a quick lick. Exactly. Because all these companies were just giving out money and all Cut this and shit. Checks. They thought it was a quick lick. And, and then it, once the money dries up, we get to see who really wants to be in it. Absolutely. And then once those people leave, you know what's more available? The money. That, oh. Oh, oh it, there's already an article. The people who are going to make the money in podcasting over the next couple of years yeah. are the people who are already established. Yeah. The Reeds, the brilliant idiots. <laughs> like, no, yes. seriously, these shows that have been around for five, ten years. Yes. Like, why am I going to spend money on a podcast that isn't proven in any way, Absolutely. shape, or form? That's just business. That, I that's, think it's that. natural. Like, what happens is, like, when there's a new thing, and, and again, for example, DJing wasn't new, but it became easy. Once you had to stop lugging around the crates and you could just put everything on a USB, the barrier of entry to DJing became really easy. And then you saw all these celebrities hop on a DJ shit. Didn't last though. But that's my point, yeah. right? So they hop on and everybody's like, oh, I want to go see this celebrity DJ. I'll see Paris Hilton DJ. Right. I'll see these people DJ because you're just in the same room as a celebrity. That's it's like right. a meet and greet. That's right. Eventually, either the money dried up or they weren't that good or whatever it is and then they leave the game. And I think that's probably what ends up happening in podcasts. Yes, man. Yeah. And, and and listen, the reason I always keep going back to the read, even though they, they have a love-hate relationship with me, and I understand why, you know, <laughs> I can be a bit much. I have been a bit much over the years. But the reason I keep going back to them is because the first time I ever saw Kid Fury, Kid Fury was on YouTube 15 years ago. Yeah. Like honing his craft. Like, yeah. and you could tell, like, this kid's got, this, this guy's special. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, he just had, Something, yep. right? Same thing with a crystal. You can take crystal and put her anywhere and it translates. Mm -hmm. We've seen it. Mm -hmm. When I used to have her on Uncommon Sense, mm -hmm. you put crystal next to anybody that she bodying folks. Mm -hmm. you know, so when you take these two together and these people have more than put in their 10,000 hours, that's how you build something special like yep. to read. You look at the brilliant idiots. Okay, Chris says, I'm going to go get this guy, this guy that does morning radio, tell him he needs to do a podcast. Oh, Andrew Schultz. Stand-up comedian. You see him on Guy Code giving these takes. See him on social media giving these takes. This got to translate to podcast, right? Ten years later, boom. Mm -hmm. We still here by the grace of God and because, you know, we got a great fan base that listens to us. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. Then just bringing, you really got people that think they can just come off the street yesterday and they, yeah. we make it look that easy that you can just get in front of a microphone and just talk. And yeah. you wonder why your shit ain't translating. Yeah. You yes, wonder why yes, your shit you not can, connected with nobody. Yes, you can. You can yeah. start today. <laughs> <laughs> you can start today and, and be a huge. I've told yeah. you this before and I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> I hate your business. <laughs> <laughs> I've told him this before. Yo, I hate, why you going I hate <laughs> WT. Hey, listen, the, this woman, right? So I, yo, Hold on. Sure. This right. woman, this, I, I, we need to protect this woman that posted sure. this. Who's this woman, yo? <laughs> yo. I, I retweeted her. Her name is at the baddest Mitch on Twitter. <laughs> she said the CIA dropped those red cartoon boots off into black neighborhoods like they did crack, fireworks, and podcast mics. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with her. <laughs> I 100% agree with her. And y'all should start having more criteria. Son, I'm in Soho. What you mean? What do you mean? Yeah, that's true. I'm, what does that I'm, mean? I'm not in the hood. Huh? I'm not in the hood. You said No, I mean, y'all should start having more checks and balances. You should do mental evaluation tests for people who want podcasts. So, you should sit them down and ask them. So I got to kick your ass out of here then. Maybe. <laughs> but you should ask them why they want to start a podcast. Seriously. Yeah. But no, I think we got to be supportive ask that of everybody yes. wanting to do it. I. Yes. And I don't say that just to support your business. I mean that sincerely because I think that's how you show the cream 
right? It's like, I want everybody to try podcasts. I want every famous person to think it's just talking on a mic. I feel the same way about stand-up. That's I true. wish more people tried stand-up so they know how fucking hard it is. You're a right. lot of people never tried stand-up. They make their friends laugh. They make the people at work laugh. So they're like, oh, yeah, I can Ooh, just go on stage. I like that. It's no, like, I'm no. sure the same thing exists no, with radio. Right. It's different. He's right. When you got to go for hours and talk on a microphone and then you realize that your show's bombing and it's like, oh. You know why you're right? Because now you'll get that person on the right path. See? Now that person will go figure out what it is they should actually be And they doing. put some new respect on the game. They go, oh, wow, these people are really good at that thing. That's a skill. You're right. And the fact that it looks accessible, the fact that it looks like you could do it shows our skill. That's right. And I, I want, want everything to look easy. And I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the people coming fresh off the street because that wouldn't be right, right? Because once again, the read is a perfect example or a horrible decision. It's a perfect example of people who didn't have any experience in media, but clearly had a calling to be in front of these microphones. Because you, to Andrew's point, you got celebrities, you got successful comedians, singers, rappers who do podcasts and they don't work. Yep. You know what I mean? This shit is not for everybody. And you will know pretty quickly mm -hmm. whether or not this shit is for you. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. remember the first podcast we put out? Yeah. Well, of course you remember. Do you know how many views it had? 50,000? 50,000. 50, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Because yeah. in my mind, Damn, Alex. See? You no, see? you keep trying to put no, this shit in my mouth. Yeah, he pulled the wire. <laughs> he pulled the wire underneath. That was crazy, no. bro. That was God that was saying, crazy, don't suck bro. your own dick right now. Yeah, that That's what God was saying. Stay humble. Teeth, you know? You're out here <laughs> fucking chomping, No, bro. but in my mind, I was like, yo, I didn't think nobody wanted to listen to me outside of radio. Mm. That's really how I felt. That's one of the reasons when Chris came to me about doing a podcast, I was like, why would I do a podcast? I got more than radio. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, I don't, I don't think, I was like, why would people want to hear me when I'm not on the radio? I knew people would want to hear you. I didn't. I'm not even joking. I had yeah. When I saw that 50,000, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That we was texting each other like, yo, you know we number one on these Apple charts shit? Yeah, you see, yeah, you know, they yeah. got charts for podcasting yeah, and we yeah. number one on this shit? Yeah. Like, I didn't think nothing of it. So then it just became a thing of, I thoroughly enjoyed coming here every week yeah. and kicking shit with my friend. Yeah. Then, got, yeah, go, 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 go. I remember getting a check. And you were like, huh? Yeah. And I remember one day Andrew was like, Whoa, we're printing money. We he was like, oh my God, this shit is unbelievable. And it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hold up, you can pay for this shit too. I didn't, Chris didn't say that part. <laughs> like, like, he just was telling me to, to start a podcast. Yeah. I'm like, all right, why not? Because I saw Combat Jack doing it. Yeah. I saw the Reed doing it. Yeah. Champs podcast is another one. Neil yeah. Brennan and Motion Casher. Yeah. But I just thought that was some niche shit. Yeah. Now it's, Everybody's doing it. Which is it. great. <sighs> I know that frustrates you, but I do think it's great because I want more people to do something so they appreciate what greatness is within it. It's like yeah. the more people that play basketball recognize how great Jordan is. The more people that play soccer recognize how great Messi or Ronaldo is. So, so I like it. I like more people being interested. Also, the more people who are doing podcasts and listening to podcasts, the more podcast fans there are because yeah, yeah, yeah. their fans will also seek out other podcasts. The more interest there is in a space, one, the more money is in a space, the more eyeballs are in a space. It's like, it's great for... Yeah, I don't know how much the podcast audience is growing. That's the only thing that's kind of scary. Oh, I, mean, I think I, it's growing like crazy. I don't think... I don't, it, I'm not sure. Yo, think about it like this. The, the, the movie You People... The leads are podcasting. Yeah, podcasting. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah, show yeah. Sex in the City, Shorty comes back... To do a, a podcast. podcast. Like, yeah, yeah, podcast yeah. becomes part of the lexicon. It's almost like, you know how jujitsu is really popular? Yeah, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. the martial art? Yeah. Like, in movies back in the day when we were growing up, it was karate, right? Absolutely. Now, you see the movies, it's jujitsu. It's just the new trending thing that people no, are really is. into. And the more popular it is, like, the more filled those classes are, et cetera. So, so I think it's, I love it. I love it. Yeah, and I want to salute the Loudspeaker Network. You know what I mean? Salute to my guy, Nori. I, I saw Nori had everybody uh, everybody uh, upset because of some comments that he he made about he Loudspeaker. Uh, we can play the comments. Um, he said about Loudspeakers? Yeah, he was he was saying about Loudspeakers. You know, me and Nori spoke about it. You know, I mean, the reality of the situation is Nori was just wrong. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because uh, the, the, the things he said about Loudspeaker just weren't true. You know, and rest in peace to Combat Jack. And, you know, I, I think maybe people didn't know. I thought they did. Combat Jack wasn't signed to Loudspeaker Network. He owned Loudspeaker Network. You know what I'm saying? Combat Jack, Chris Moreau, they owned the Loudspeakers Network. Mm. They founded the Loudspeakers Network. They launched the Loudspeakers Network. They owned the Loudspeaker Network. You know, uh, to 
reduce combat to just a talent that was signed to a company that 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 that's not accurate mm-hmm. you know in any way shape or form and i think nori was saying how you know people were signing their youtubes over the loudspeaker loudspeaker was not on youtube mm-hmm. you know what i mean and, and then when they did like when combat was posting his show on youtube after a while under the loudspeaker network that was combat jack doing that for his show mm-hmm. you know it, 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 it. so anybody saying loudspeaker you know uh takes money from artists or takes money from talent or yeah. that, that's, that's just not accurate. That's a peculiar thing to say. That, yeah. that, was, that wasn't accurate. That wasn't accurate at all. And I, I mean, Nori, you know, he, 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 knew, he knew he didn't have his information right after we, after we spoke, right. you know, but. Well, hopefully he'll correct that then. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know if he, he might have, he might have already. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's tricky. I'm sure like you, you probably come from a business that's a little bit more exploitative. Is that the word? Rap. He comes from Absolutely. that. So he probably assumes the same thing would apply to, to podcasting, but the reality is, especially in the early days of podcasting, that's not the case at all. You know? Yeah, yeah, see, yes. And t- I saw Nori tweet this. He said in December, I guess he, you wanted to come on Drink Champs. Remember, FYI, I would never diss combat our tax, but I did state facts and I never dissed loudspeaker after watching the whole thing. Not what? Oh, not clips. Yeah, no, but Nori wasn't stating facts, though. So, yeah, don't do that to loudspeaker. Like, like, let's like if we're gonna be accurate about history mm-hmm. and 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 you know who did what in the podcast space, you can't even have those conversations without talking about the loudspeaker network. Yeah, the first hip hop podcast were Combat Jack and Juan Epp, yeah. and I don't even think I like those guys. Okay, yeah. but I would say that you know what I mean I'm not gonna ever hate on them in that way. You because history is history. You're not right. gonna ever you're not and, and you're not gonna ever you know take away somebody's history. Yeah. First hip hop podcast were Combat Jack and Juan Epp. Those are the first two I remember. Oh, right. Those were the first two. First, first, first lifestyle commentary podcast I personally heard was The Reed yep. and Joe Rogan. Yeah. Those are the first those are the ones that I heard about. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, let's 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 give credit where credit is due, people. All right? You wanna pay some bills? Let's do it. All right, guys, we'll take a break for a second because I need to talk to y'all about therapy, man. Therapy is this beautiful, amazing thing. And Talkspace was was really ahead of the game. What Talkspace does that makes therapy incredibly convenient to you. It's going to match you with the therapist of your desires. And you could do the whole thing on Zoom. You could do it over the phone. It is so incredibly convenient. Now, I know before the pandemic, back in the day, nobody was going to do a therapy session on the phone, Okay. What were they doing back in the day? They weren't going to do a therapy session over Zoom, but now that is how it is done and Talkspace has got your back and they're going to be there so you can work through all the problems, the anxiety that you might have. I'm telling you, sometimes the most difficult thing is not knowing why you're so anxious, not knowing why you're so stressed, not knowing why you have some sort of crippling, uncomfortable fear when you're put in certain situations and a great licensed therapist is someone who's going to help you work through those moments and really help you get your life back on track. I can't say enough great things about therapy. I'm very fortunate. I was raised in a family that that was very comfortable with going to therapists. Most of my parents went through therapy. So therapy never had any stigma. And now I feel like a lot of people are realizing the value to it. So I hope you guys do too. And Talkspace has got your back. Now, now as a listener of this podcast, uh, you are going to get $100 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots. Okay. Now, if you want to match with a licensed therapist today, you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $100 off your first month and show your support for this show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. Now, Charlemagne. Yo. This show is also brought to you by Squarespace. Did you know that? Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything, your products, your content, even your time. I'm telling you, if you have a business and you do not have a website, you do not have a business. Nobody's taking your shit seriously. You need a place on the internet for your business because the internet is Times Square now. The internet is Broadway. The internet is Fifth Avenue. The internet is the most important piece of of retail in your life. You need to have a place for it right there. Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. They got member areas. You can unlock new revenue streams for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or 
newsletters. Okay, you can create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app is going to help you with all that. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. They have the built-in analytics to show the impact of every send. I'm telling you, Squarespace is where it's at. And right now, if you head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot. You're going to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some church announcements. What you got, Schultz? Yo, um, I've agreed to do one stand-up show. Ooh. One? I'm coming up to Calgary, um, and I'm going to do a show up in Calgary. I think it's August 27th. Tickets are at theandrewshows.com. The Great Outdoors Festival, it's crazy. Um, it just, it, yeah, I've, I've seen some videos and pictures of this place. It looks fucking unbelievable. So I was like, this looks really good. So, so yeah, but I'm back in the clubs, and I'm back up, and it's exciting to be doing stand-up again. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to, I'm very excited, man. I'm very excited. So, yeah, I've agreed to go do that. That's August 27th. Go get those tickets at Uh, What do I have? Um, I will be doing the Roots Picnic on the, 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 the June. Well, the Roots Picnic is June 2nd through the 4th in Philadelphia. Uh, I'll be on the podcast stage at the Roots Picnic. Um, I was trying to make it a brilliant idiot thing, but shows never responded back to me. I did say, I said I'm down. No, you did not. I did. I texted you and I said, yo, you want to do the Roots Picnic? You left me on read. Red? What I say? <laughs> what I say? You talk for a living. Bro. What I say, yo? <laughs> what I say, yo? Yeah, that. Yeah. Wait a minute. So what's the deal? Uh, well, I mean, they, they, they. Uh, I, I wanted to do brilliant idiots, um, because you know they asked me to do it, and so now I'm gonna do um, uh, I'm doing a one-on-one conversation with somebody. All right. Well, maybe Unless that's you- the reason. What? <laughs> no, I wanted to do idiots. I had to give them an answer. I hit you. I said, yo, you want to do... Let me see. I can't even find the fucking text now. Well, is it too late to change it? Because... I don't know, you the know. The people would love to see you guys do a live show. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm... De- listen. Listen, I don't want to... Um, I'm not against it. I don't all. want to I- I- encroach on this one-on-one. Maybe it's a really interesting one-on-one interview. Maybe. Yeah, but yeah. it might actually be even better if it's a tag team. Well, there's no question it'd be better, but I, I don't want to. <laughs> but I, I actually <laughs> would like to see you in conversation with this person. If it's Dr. Umar Johnson, we're going to shut down the entire <laughs> Internet. And <laughs> I must Dr. be there. Umar. Oh, fuck. It's not Dr. Umar. But we'll, we'll Can see. Can you say who it is? Um, nah, because it's not confirmed yet. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, I'll be doing the Roots Picnic June 2nd, 4th. Maybe it'll be a brilliant idiot thing. I don't know. Um, Yes, I, we haven't announced that yet, though, Taylor. But, we but shout out the Roots that Picnic, man. That's a really cool event. I want to feel the energy. Like, yeah, I, I've never I been. it's really cool, man. Uh, I've went a couple times. It's great. As, yeah, yeah, I heard. Yeah. I've seen heard. a lot. Yeah, I've just, I don't know. I think the energy around it is always really cool. And I think Quest is the man, so. so Quest is that guy. I've yeah, never he been. really is that guy. So, you know, the fact that they want me to headline the podcast stage this year and I think that's a great idea by them, and I think that you would have an awesome one-on-one interview with whoever it is. And uh, well, brilliant idiots would be crazy. But if they want to do a brilliant idiots, and and you know, obviously the schedule is all aligned, I'd be down for that too, man. Uh, what else we got? Um, I have something else I wanted to say for church announcements. God damn it! What else? What else? What else? Oh, um, I forgot. Salute to Erica Alexander for winning the uh, the Dupont Award for finding Tamika, and Erica is also nominated for what they call the uh. Ah, God damn it, Chris. Why are you not here? Hold on. What's this thing called? Because Chris nominated for it, too. The, uh... I can't find the shit. Oh, the Ambies. Finding Tamika is also nominated uh, at the Ambies for Best Documentary Excellence in Audio. Uh, In Summer of 85 is also nominated. I forgot what category, though. Text me and tell me what category, Chris. But Chris is nominated at the Ambies, too. Um, what is Sum of 85 for? Uh, he's nominated for Sum of 85. Oh, the Audi. Oh, I'm, my bad. Sum of 85 is nominated for the Audi Award. These are just the big audio awards. Like the DuPont is like, like the Oscar of audio awards. Gotcha. And Finding Tamika won that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an award that Columbia uh, University gives out 
But then the Ambies and the Audis are also two big, huge award shows in the audio space. So some of 85 nominated for an Audi and uh, Finding Tamika is nominated for an Ambie. So we're doing our thing at SBA Productions with Audible, man. And we got two more projects coming out this year. Uh, can't wait to tell y'all uh, what those are. I can tell y'all one of them, though, because um, we already announced them. Uh, Unleashed with Love by Alicia Renee. That would be our first oh. scripted. Uh, she wrote it? Her and um, Sarita. Sarita, uh, uh, I'm blanking on Sarita's last name. Her and a young lady named Sarita wrote uh, Unleashed with Love, and it will be out later this year. So look for that. That'll be the next release coming out on uh, Audible. Um, what else we got? Let's do some uh, Asking Idiots, man, because we got things to do. Do you? Sarita Wesley. Salute to you, Sarita. We got things to do. do. Salute to Jess Hilarious. Jess Hilarious will be uh, hosting with us on Breakfast Club all week long. Y'all got to stop with everybody being y'all favorite guest host too, man. That's why you don't listen to the internet. Um, GC77 <laughs> says, Schultz, where do they sell capris for men? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Today, I looked at my own pants, and I was like, man, these are a little short. Yes, bro. Um, don't yes, bro. You've been wearing short pants, too, after <laughs> you following me, bro. Where you You've been where, following me, where, bro. Where Go look at every flagrant episode. Where this guy at? got the ankles out just like your boy. Stop. Whatever I do, people do. You cut the shit. out. You're talking about the tastemaker. You got the shit. You're talking about the gatekeeper. You're yes. talking about the kingmaker right now. Dang. My pants are exactly as long as they're supposed to be. The Ooh. reason why your pants don't touch your ankles is because you're a midget. <laughs> What's this guy's name? Did What's you, this guy's did you name? just say that this shit's Small. What's this? Yeah, yeah, but then I flip. I realized my confidence needs to come back. GC seventy seven. Yeah, GC seventy seven. Okay, GC seventy seven. Get longer legs. <laughs> Why don't you get some longer legs? This is what happens to pants when you got long legs. Okay, simple as that. Don't be mad at me. Be be, be mad at your parents. <laughs> Welcome to life over six feet. Yeah, yeah. Woo that one, Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even realize I'm short, bro. <laughs> Thank you. I don't. I only realize it's short neither. I walk in the room looking Yo, down on people. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Damn. I'm with you in that regard. I don't be realizing I'm short. All right, Yorker T. If Thanos snaps all the black people out of the U.S., how many things will perish? I don't even know what that means. Perish? Oh, he meant perish. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. He tried his best. Great movie. I mean, great play. There's a great play called uh, Ain't No More. Okay. Um, that Jordan Cooper wrote, Lee Daniels leaned away for producers on it, and they ad they they addressed this in a way that I don't even know if they addressed it. And what I found interesting about it, the play is about you know a group like black people basically get allotted a one way ticket back to Africa, mm. so all the black people in America can leave and you know go live in Africa, and there's this bag in the play. And the bag basically represents all the things that black people have contributed to culture. So one of the characters is like, yo, we can't leave that bag. Now, mind you, all the black people don't leave, but they're like, you can't leave this bag. You can't leave this bag. You can't leave this bag. But at the end, damn, am I giving away the play? At the end of the play, when he tries to take the bag, the bag won't move. Mm. The bag doesn't want to come. The bag is like not going. Mm. But what that symbolized, at least to me, was the stuff that we used here to survive and then thrive, we don't need it where we're going. Oh. That's just baggage. Like mm. that, that served us already. Mm. Leave it. You know what I'm saying? So when you say snap all black people out of the U S how many things will perish? I don't, I, I, I don't know. Cause I don't know how many things are actually for others. As opposed, as, as opposed to those things actually being for us. I think what he's trying to say is like, what will we stop watching the NBA? Like, you know, is, no, you got Mac McCung. <laughs> McCung. Don't, don't <laughs> do it. All it's going to do, do all it. it's going to is do I'm it. just saying it's just gonna no, make room for those white something. guys who can ball. Oh, I thought you were doing what you were doing earlier again. <laughs> what? You know No, what? I'm not doing honky tonk. Man. You were doing I'm not doing tonk. Asian honky tonk. You were doing Asian honky tonk. I'm just saying tonk, bro. it's gonna make more room for those guys. I bet you it's a bunch of Mac McCungs in the G League. <laughs> bro, <laughs> stop it. That bro. shit sounded crazy. Yo, yo, <laughs> you need to chill out. I felt man. like I said something about a gong. Did I? Charlemagne? 
That's crazy. Charlemagne. <laughs> Charlemagne. You're doing it again. You're getting a little riled up. You're getting a little riled up. And when you get a little riled up. Bring it do down. It. Just bring it down. Out. You're too high. You're too high. Come on. You Listen. don't need to be that tall, no, y'all. No, you mate. don't. Come down. God. Latoya Amaz God, says. God damn. Gosh darn it. Gosh <laughs> darn it. You did it again. Every <laughs> once in a while, you let one slip out and you don't realize it. And then you just All keep I moving was saying, on. There was no need for me to be that high. Is that I'm, it? I'm going to bring it. Me and Jeremy Lynn, we're going to bring it right back down here. You keep saying Asian things. No, I'm not. You do keep saying it. No, you, I'm not. Am I supposed to believe that was just a random analogy that you were using? Well, I right used there? two of them. I used the tall one and the shorter one. Is that like a yin and a yang or like? <laughs> exactly. That, okay. That's all. All right. That's okay. It, okay. It. okay. All right. That makes sense. Nola Scope, Nola Scope says if okay. your industry didn't exist, what would be your, God damn it. Let me tell you how, I'm going to read this shit the way he wrote it. If your <laughs> industry wouldn't exist, what would be your of you guys? <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck he's trying to say. <laughs> like, what would we do? I guess that's what he's trying to say. If your industry wouldn't exist, what would be your of you guys? I'd probably be a Chinese spy balloon pilot. <laughs> I think I think that's what I would do yeah, for a yeah, living. Yeah, I'd be yeah, a Chinese yeah, yeah. spy balloon pilot. But you don't even got to be in the spy balloon, though. You can do that shit from remote control somewhere. Yo, do you think they drive the balloons because in the air you have the least chance of crashing? Yeah. I think so. That makes a lot of sense. Back 246 says, when were you most starstruck in your life? When was I most starstruck? Starstruck. I've never been starstruck. You've never been starstruck? Nah, I've been stupid. Prince didn't have me starstruck. It was just like stupid. I just was dumb when I saw That's him. what starstruck is. Nah. It's nah. So just, it was just early in the morning. What? <laughs> what? 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 I didn't realize how many Asian sounds you it's just unbelievable, make. unbelievable, right? bro. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy, it's bro. It's fucking believable. Just your sounds though, yo. is super I'm, Asian, I'm bro. hearing so much goddamn cultural appropriation. You it's really crazy. do, man. <laughs> oh, you said me? I thought you just meant in general. <laughs> you, Jen I thought you were talking about like juvenile, huh? And no, goddamn. you just did that. What I said? <laughs> you said, huh? And like, no, a, I did not. This I guy. did not do that. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You are being you. I do think, but but by the way, we do we do need to, uh, just the, the, the moral of this whole thing. is What this, is the moral of this? To bring together the fact that people down south do sound Asian. And Asians do sound like honky-tonk people. We did not realize that until today. They do. So there's a similarity there. We need, they do. We need to show that. I'm almost like, do we try to slow down Chinese and I think see we what should. It's like. I think we should do it because somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to hear this episode and they're going to do it. They're going to chop and screw the Chinese people and then they're going to speed up honky tonk people to see what the similarities are. So you might as well do it ourselves. Yep. What you think? I think yeah. I think we're just coming closer together. I, it'd be beautiful to 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 find out that Mandarin or Cantonese is really just like a sped up version of like American Southern twang. <laughs> That's beautiful. Let's let's end on this one. This is good. Uh, Brad Krim 3 says, how you feel about the NBA celebrating LeBron so much? <laughs> I told you people just live to, to tear down successful people. Yeah. That is a fucked up question, yo. Why shouldn't they celebrate him? He just broke the all time NBA scoring record, meaning that there's nobody in the history of the NBA who has scored more points than him. That is a huge deal <laughs> in a sport that is like basketball. Deal. Why wouldn't they celebrate him? They should celebrate him, bro. This is history. Like we, this is absolute positive history. Like I don't like that's just a wild question to ask. How do we feel about the NBA celebrating LeBron so much? What are they supposed to not? What are they supposed yeah, to? Yeah, who are they supposed to celebrate this <laughs> year if not LeBron? Matt McCone. It's McClung, bro. What's his name? Matt Mac McClung. Matt McClung. Yeah. Every time I say that shit, I hit a gong go off, I bro. Know, it's crazy. Yeah, you're 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 like an interesting guy, man. <laughs> what do you mean? You just need everything to be Asian. I think you really just love Asia so much. I think you have a real affinity for Asia. I do. We're supposed to go to Asia this summer, actually. Really? We're supposed to. If if Weezy put the trip together. Where in Asia? Shit, I don't want to say now because it might not be Asia. I thought it was Asia. Japan. 
Bro, of so course Japan see, is in Asia. Japan's bro. Asia, right? Yeah. I thought so. Y'all made me y'all had me questioning myself. Like, damn, did I say something wrong? <laughs> Japan, I don't get it. Japan is Asia. So, Japan bro. is very Asian. So crazy. So very Asian. It? Crazy, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. It's super Asian. They flag right? will throw you off though. What? The, you ever seen the flag of Japan? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pull up the flag of Japan, bro. What, the rising sun? That's what that is? Yeah. What did you think it was? <laughs> I don't want to say. <laughs> bring up that goddamn flag immediately. Yo, bring up that fucking flag Pull immediately. Pull up the flag. Pull up the flag. Pull up the... We can end on this. Just get the Japanese flag, Taylor. If we don't edit it. The Japanese Because I don't know flag. how this is going to be taken. But Japanese there's a long flag. time... If for a long time, you thought that was the Indian flag. You thought it was the Indian flag. <laughs> you thought it was the Indian. Hey flag, man, yeah, I'm just a little, huh? India is in Asia, but that I understand why you thought it was the Indian flag. That's all I'm saying, bro. That does make sense. No, 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 no. That's, I, I, I that's think all that that makes I'm sense. saying. But I, I didn't know any better. That's all I'm saying. But that is the Japanese flag, and you said that's the rising sun. They are the land of, of the, the rising, rising sun. sun. Word. Okay. That's it. Yeah, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Boom. All right, guys. <laughs> we got it. You learned. <laughs> oh, as always. We don't want to try it? No. As always, if you listen to this <laughs> podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think that, you know, I don't even remember what the fuck I'm saying. Hold on. Oh, if you listen think we're to smart. This- if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.